you guys haven't already, make sure to join our fragrance swapping and selling group. I'll leave a link in the description below. The idea is that everyone in the community can gain access to really expensive fragrances for as cheap as possible. And we don't have to use Facebook's user interface, which is awkward and has a lot of annoying rules there. So you do pay two pounds a month or three dollars a month and all the money that you guys pay for the membership goes back to the members at the end of the month uh, for a monthly giveaway. So whoever wins the giveaway can get any fragrance that's within the budget of the uh, amount of subscription money that's gone to it. Make sure to check it out guys, link below. It's becoming more common now that YouTube reviewers are releasing their own fragrances. They don't necessarily release their own brands, but a lot, a lot of them actually do collaborations with other big brands. I thought it would be interesting to do a video on all the YouTube reviewer uh, fragrances that I have so far in my collection to see if uh, us content creators are putting out stuff that is good quality. I have a mixture in my opinion today. I think some of these fragrances are fantastic, absolutely phenomenal, and some aren't that good to be honest. Uh, so I'm gonna briefly discuss each reviewer and then discuss the creation they've made. Let's see if these are worth buying. Let's start off with the man who started it all, Fragrance One by Jeremy Fragrance. I'm gonna discuss the three fragrances that I own from him, which are Office, Date, and Black Tie. So let's discuss Office first. I only have a sample of it, and that's pretty much all you need, because this stuff is powerful. Jeremy is legendary, he has his own style, and I think it's portrayed in his fragrances. They have to be mass appealing, perform fantastic, and get you compliments. I think most of his fragrances achieve that. Office for Men was a controversial release because it was crowdfunded, it was the first fragrance from the brand and uh, what happened was the people did not agree with the pricing of the brand. Actually George at Fragrance Apprentice did a great analysis of uh, Fragrance One. Uh, I'll link in the description as well. Um, and in my opinion, yeah, the, the brand is overpriced. Uh, Jeremy's going for luxury but I've said before that he has very simple packaging and then he does discounts as well, which is strange for a luxury brand. You'll never see Cree do 60% off like Jeremy does frequently. So as George said in his video, I, I agree. He needs to clarify his own brand identity and stick to a certain, a certain brand approach. Office for Men itself is a simple fragrance. It gets the job done. It is an office fragrance, I agree. It's inoffensive, it's very mass appealing, but it's quite loud. I'm not sure if everyone would agree to have a, a loud office fragrance. It's got a good amount of projection, similar to Sauvage EDT's projection, in my opinion. And this fragrance is a combination of citrus, vetiver, and a lot of ambroxan. Um, I think it does, it does give me a lot of compliments, fair enough, but I don't like it for how synthetic this is. This is made by Alberto Marias, who I think has much better creations than this. I think it is Jeremy's style and fair play to him, um, but I would want something that's a bit more creative and artistic. And Office Fragrance, even though it's inoffensive, does not have to mean it's <laughs> lacking character. In my opinion, this does lack character. Um, I think it doesn't do enough to blend the synthetic aroma chemicals that are in here. It's too much of an ambroxan bomb, uh, but, but I, I do think it has its strengths. Overall, it's an okay fragrance. Then we have Date for Men. In my opinion, this could be used for clubbing. It is a loud fragrance again. Phenomenal performance. It reminds me a lot of Ultramouse. It's got that sweet, fruity bubblegum vibe going for it. With a lot of patchouli as well. Uh, it's, it, it smells like um, Officer Men's DNA, base DNA, was given more character, more depth. I like it for that reason, because it has more artistic value in it, in my opinion, but it smells too similar to Ultramouse. So again, for both of these, where I feel that you know something like Sauvage or Aventus could replace Office or Ultramouth could replace this. I wonder why the price, the price is set as high as it is. And I think there needs to be more to, to diversify these kind of fragrances uh, for the luxury brand appeal he's going for. But again, fantastic compliment factor, fantastic performance. I like this more than Office for Men. I think this is an above average fragrance but still not good enough for the price in my opinion. And then we have my favorite of the three, which is actually Black Tie for Men. Now, again, I don't think this is a Black Tie fragrance. I'm having disagreements about the, uh, the, the branding of these releases, but I like this one the most because this actually smells the most niche. This is very bad boy-esque in my opinion. It smells very smoky. I think the main note here is Gaiac wood. It's, very, it's a very smoky, woody leather fragrance, giving this overall very animalic um, appeal to this fragrance. It's a more risky style that 
Jeremy Wimp with this. Fantastic performance still. All of these, are, all his fragrances are easily over 12 hours longevity, which is impressive. It's not easy to make such a long lasting fragrance. And I think this, again, is it is a very smoky, bad boy-esque effect. It's very linear. It has a lot of orange, good, good quality, high natural orange oil in the opening. I think it's in the same realm as something like Dior Homme Parfum. It doesn't smell similar at all, but it has a similarity of being a lot of character in these fragrances. Uh, and you need someone who's very much a boss-like character in and of himself. Someone who is quite serious um, a badass, in my opinion. Uh, and I think those, that's the kind of gentleman who will rock black tie well. Again, I don't think it's a black tie <laughs> affair sort of fragrance, but it's more of that, that type of character. A mature, well put together, refined gentleman. Uh, I think this is impressive. This is very interesting to smell, but again, probably overpriced still. Maybe half the price of all these fragrances and everyone would be very happy, Jeremy. That's what I'm saying. Next up, we have Dan's, Mr. Smelly's fragrances. Dan himself is the quintessential British gentleman reviewer in the community. He likes very much the classical barbershop style and he's made some fantastic barbershop scents himself in Norton & Wilson, his brand that he co-founded. So first of all, let's start off with this. Gravitas Pour Homme. This is a beautiful presentation and a beautiful fragrance. I may be a little bit biased because the perfumer who made this is the same perfumer who's making our own fragrance release as well. John Stephen is a master of his craft uh, I think he did a great job with this fragrance. It's not actually my style uh, personally, but I think it's for the mature gentleman. There's someone who likes that classical barbershop style, but brought more to the modern era. I think any gentleman over the age of 30 will love this. It's got a very uh, masculine combination of spices with lavender. <laughs> lavender oak moss is, is a classic combination for any barbershop scent as well as vanilla. This is a vanilla-based barbershop scent. This has fantastic longevity. This is a, an example of an office fragrance that has a lot of character, but it's still inoffensive. It's, it's, it's fairly close to the skin, but it lasts e easily over eight hours. I think this is just a masterpiece. The, it's not, again, not my style, but the blend is, is phenomenal. I, I think, yeah, if, you're, if you want to, uh, the perfect office fragrance, this is one of them, in my opinion. Uh, I did get sent this bottle and the other fragrance um, for free by Dan, but this is my own uh, honest opinion. Not my style, but masterful, masterful perfumery. Then we have Bon Viveur. The second release by Norton & Wilson isn't as good as Gravitas in my opinion, but I still think this is excellent. They're both <laughs> very high quality. I essentially think the idea, what Dan was going for was that Gravitas can be your signature scent you wear anytime, any place as a refined gentleman all year round, but apart from maybe the high heat in the summer, I think this is where Bon Viveur comes to fill in that space. It eases up on the vanilla. I don't think there's any vanilla in here, but this is very heavy on the citruses. Um, it still smells herbaceous. I, don't, I think they toned down the lavender in this as well, and it's more heavy on the muskiness. So this has got clean musks in here. It's not as long lasting, it's maybe four to six hours, but it's phenomenal for perfumery still at the end of the day. I think this is the, again, the perfect refined gentleman's inoffensive, inoff inoffensive uh, summertime fragrance. I think this is very good as well. I prefer Gravitas, but they're both phenomenal releases. Next up, we have Demi Rawlings fragrance. I like Demi. She's a fantastic reviewer. Uh, I think pretty much any straight man <laughs> in the fragrance community likes Demi. She is attractive. She has a really laid back, friendly and approachable style to reviewing. She does a mixture of both designer, niche fragrances. She gets her sister as well in a lot of her videos and I think she's one of the legends in the community and she released this fragrance here in a collaboration with Fragrance Dubois. This is Minuit et Demi which is half past midnight I believe in French. It's a clever play on words by Fragrance Dubois. This fragrance is what she describes as a sort of gourmand, very close to the skin, uh, cozy, probably date night fragrance I would say. Uh, it's not Fragrance Dubois' usual style. Fragrance Dubois pretty much has oud in every single one of their releases. That is their thing. They always have oud. So it was a bit interesting how they uh, veered away from that. Um, and I think they should have stuck with the oud because I think this is a weak release from them. I think the fragrance is just way too overpriced, first of all. Um, it's also not as interesting to smell as other competing fragrances in the same price range. I don't know why people would go for this fragrance instead of uh, Black Phantom by Killian, 
which has the same similar sort of vibe to it. This is sort of like a, I think this is a coffee, chocolate, amber based fragrance. I think there's some cardamom in here as well. It's, it has a very nice opening, that's the best bit, but the problem with this fragrance is that it's, it is very light and easy to wear. You can wear this pretty much all year round. And I think you could wear this with someone to cozy up with them, cuddle with them. But I think that's pretty much the only time you'd ever wear this because it's so close to the skin, this fragrance. It has some last hour, I think, but pretty much after you wear this for four hours, you think to yourself, you, you can barely detect this in the air. At that point, you want to just reapply a different fragrance. The performance here is lacking in this fragrance. The price is way too high for this fragrance. I don't think this is as good as it could have been uh, for Demi um, to release. And I think it's not as not good enough for fra Fragrance Dubois, in my opinion. Fragrance Dubois do better than this usually. Just for trans transparency's sake, they actually sent me this bottle for free, but I'm giving you my honest opinion. They also sent me a New York Intense for free, and I love that fragrance. That's, again, it's got oud in there, got rose. That fragrance performs. I think this is an underwhelming release overall, but I appreciate the uh, approach that Demi was going for. Fair play to you, you know, releasing things is not easy, and of course people can critique your, your work, but hey, um, it would be interesting to see Demi release more fragrances in the future with a bit more projection. <laughs> Next up we have the creation that, again, is a collaboration with Zahara fragrances that was made with Curly Sense, Andrea. I struggled to get the other two creations from that trio, the Z Creators um, project. So I don't have Justin Copeland's fragrance, I don't have uh, Ross TLTG's fragrance either. But I did get a hold of The Siren by Zaharoff. Uh, I think Andrea is a fantastic reviewer, by the way. She's got one of the most attractive personalities in the entire community. She's very attractive in general herself. And I think she's released a phenomenal, phenomenal project here. <laughs> this is a very good fragrance. So. I, I, I'm choosing this one now at this point in the video to show you how a gourmand should be done. This fragrance again is more close to the skin later on, but the, the first two hours it has a good amount of projection, you know, probably medium two feet projection. Um, and I think this has got leather, I'm getting coffee, boozy notes. Uh, this is again, it's very sweet, but at the same time, not overly sweet, very balanced. For people who like Black Phantom or Killian's Angel Share, these are the kind of people who I definitely recommend. Get this fragrance if you still can. I think it's, it's actually might be discontinued. But if you can get it, do. This is so good. This performs. Um, this is super sexy. I think it's unisex. Um, I think you pretty much wear this most of the year round. Maybe not summertime, but it's just, it's just a very nicely done fragrance. It's very well balanced, as I said. And that's the issue with a lot of gourmand fragrances. They become a little bit unwearable because they're too sticky, cloying, and annoying. Uh, this fragrance does not do that. It has a lot of handsomeness as well, in my opinion, in general. I think a man could definitely easily rock this, even though it's a, a female creator. I, I think it's just very, very well done. I've tried Zaharov's signature one on their first creation as well, and the, the brand in general gets a lot of good reviews. I think Zaharov is probably one of the better brands in general in the entire industry. They're doing some fantastic work and I've been very impressed so far with what I've tried. Finally, we're going back to the UK with Aaron's Terence Hughes, X Fragmentals Smolder. When I first discovered Aaron Terence Hughes' channel, I was fascinated by him. It was something new. He was a perfume reviewer that reviewed these mainstream fragrances. Very different to us traditional reviewers. He actually has insider <laughs> experience. It's very different. And it was a nice, fresh approach uh, to these videos. Um, I always, of, of course, we, he would talk about his own approach to uh, perfumery, how he made fragrances. He would use a lot of words like dark, raw, <laughs> sexy, filthy, uh, <laughs> um, filthy, some of, these are some of the adjectives he used in his fragrances. And he said, you know, they're beastly projecting. But I'd never tried any of his fragrances. This is the first one I've tried. I always wondered, you know, was he just hyping himself up? Uh, are the ways that he's describing himself true? Yes, they are true. This is exactly what I expected from the way Aaron was describing his, his fragrances. And I think that this fragrance himself, Smolder, uh, in, although in general is just a masterpiece, actually, I think it's fantastically created, much, much better than a lot of other things you'll see in the market these days. I think it suits uh, Chris from Fragmentals um, personality as well in general. This is what I imagine a gentleman like himself wearing. 
is this the best fragrance on this list today? Yes, in my opinion it is. <laughs> this has actually skyrocketed. It's one of my favorite fragrances ever in general at the moment. I will be making very good use of this 10 mil sample I have. I, the thing is you don't actually need a lot, a lot, you don't need a lot of juice, but probably, probably don't need more than 50 mils of small dip because this is a strong fragrance. I go two sprays of this fragrance and I can smell it on myself, you know, at least 16 hours. This has got longevity. Aaron Terrence Hughes is the real deal. He always talks about uh, performance and he's, he's got it. He's got it with his fragrances. It smells expensive. It smells, this is like a very smooth fragrance. This is uh, close to the skin for pretty much the entire time. I'd say it's fairly linear. It has that nice clean Neroli opening that I think is in the note breakdown. Uh, but this is mainly a woody fragrance. If you ever tried fragrances like Zerjoff's Alexandria 2, which is a rose oud fragrance that has that very sweet resinous vibe to it with the woodiness, this is sort of like that, but a little bit uh, toned down, so it's not as sickly and too dense. This is more easy to wear. Uh, it smells like a, like a refined gentleman's sweet, probably resinous. It's got, it's got a tiny bit of Middle Eastern... <laughs> vibe to it. It's got, it's probably, it's got a, 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 say, a smoky sweet woodiness with some leather in there. Probably a more mature scent. Uh, I don't think this will be loved by everyone, but I personally do love it. <laughs> and I think it's very nicely done. It's just so smooth. Uh, I would see this as somebody's cold weather nighttime fragrance. Someone wearing something like a, a refined total neck, like a nice suit with this. Uh, it's, it's, it's got its own style for sure. Um, if you like woody scents, Smolder, if you can still get it, it would, would be something you will love. Otherwise, I'm going to try out a lot more of Aaron's work in general, and I'm hoping he sees this video and hopefully recommends me some of his creations to try out next. Maybe three uh, fragrances to try out next from him. This is phenomenal, guys. Have you guys tried any of the fragrances released by YouTubers in recent years? If you have, let us know your opinions down below. I did give some negative comments about some of the releases here, but hey, when, I, when we release our fragrance, I'm, I welcome brutal criticism if anyone has any. Uh, we love uh, some feedback in the community. Why not, guys? Come on, we need to be honest about our opinions. We shouldn't just hype every single fragrance that gets released out there. But hey, I look forward to uh, reviews of our fragrance as well in the future. Make sure to check out our other videos as well, guys, uh, if you have um, time and the rest of the day. We did a, uh, a more comprehensive look at Office versus Date for Men by Jeremy. It's a little bit more in depth. If you don't have any time, you're busy, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I'll see you in the next one.